Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Latif, and welcome to Good Night Freestyle with Latif Mercado. This is episode 22 of the Good Night Freestyle podcast. And I just want to thank you guys uh, for tuning in. Um, I see the numbers, so somebody's listening. And I don't care how many there are, and the few that are, and even if it's just you and me, For the rest of this career, this podcasting career, I'm cool with that. Now, the day that you don't want to listen anymore, then I'm going to give up. So as long as I got one person on, I'm cool. And this is dedicated to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So anyway, Angel just brought me in another cup of tea. She got me, um, she brought in sleepy time tea with honey. First thing I ask her, is it going to put me to sleep? <laughs> it doesn't take much to put me to sleep at night. I, I'm really, really, I get tired by the evening. I get up so early. Um, I can't even stop. Sometimes once in a while I have to stop. And like if I if I eat something, uh, sometimes she'll say, you know, you know, when you sit down, watch something for, you know, 30 minutes or whatever. She's one of, watching one of her things. We go in the living room. Because um, I really don't take any breaks. And uh, if I sit there 10 minutes, my I start to nod. So it's weird. I just can't. I'm the same way when I drive. I don't know if anybody else is like that. It's crazy because I suck at driving as far as staying awake. I could sit down. I can, I can get a full night's sleep, get up in the morning, drink coffee, get in the car, broad daylight, everything's perfect, drive, and like... I'll say just below an hour. So figure maybe 30 to 45 minutes, I start to feel tired. My eyes want to close. So it's crazy. I've been like this for so long. And I didn't realize, I thought it was just maybe I was tired. And then as I kind of clocked it as I went on, I realized, well, it's not that I'm tired. I just can't, I don't know what it is. I think it is, what I think it is, is that maybe driving bores the hell out of me. I've never had a desire to drive. I I drove out of necessity. The first car I ever owned was um, a van. I used to do um, chimney cleaning. Uh, it was a, a long story, but anyway, I came out of prison and I got hired. My nephew um, got me a job cleaning chimneys. It's so funny because I used to confuse chimneys with fireplaces. So when he told me chimney cleaner, <laughs> you know, right away, I'm thinking of myself inside a fireplace, like with a, a rag and some spray bottles cleaning the inside. I didn't realize I had to actually go on the roof and you go up there with some brushes and you push them down and you push the suit out, the, the soot, and then you, you vacuum it. So it was it was crazy. But um, I did that in Long Island. I was, I was living in Queens and I used to have to travel. I didn't have a car at that time. I used to travel two like two hours on the on the LA on the Long Island Expressway, a uh, Long Island uh, Railroad, and then they used to pick me up there. And what was so crazy is that when I used to get there, the boss was a real ass. He was a real real ass because I was like the first one there. Like I'm coming from Queens, and I used to still get to the office at 6 a.m. I used to have to wait outside because nobody was even there yet. That's the kind of person I've always been. I'm dedicated. I get into something, and I want I I always try to add that value. You know, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn it fast. And I want to be the best at what I do. And I want to gain value to the point where people feel they can't function without me. That's always been my thing. I taught that to my kids. I recommend that to anyone, you know, you create value and people don't want to let you go. So but anyway, I used to get there before the doors even opened. Then all of a sudden you used to see the boss come open the door. And then, you know, I would go in and sit down. He didn't talk to me. He didn't even say good morning. And then it'll be another person, another person. And then finally, an hour, two hours later, place is packed with guys. 
And what they used to do is they used to double up. They used to put one or two laborers and one sales guy. So the sales guy, the, the laborers did the labor. They did all the hard work. They're the ones that did the cleaning. They're the ones that went on the roof. They're the ones that carried the supplies. And all the sales guy did was try to go and sell them something. Whether it was a chimney cap, a, stair, a stainless steel liner, a terracotta flue pipe, some sort of service. Um, and that's all they did. And it was very, like, um, a lot of favoritism. F- favoritism. And, eh, I hate to throw the race card, but, yeah, it was kind of racist. So there were certain people that were only laborers, and there were certain people that were only salespeople. But whatever. It was his job. But what made it even worse was the fact that even though I was the first one there, out of five days out of the week, at least three of those days, he sent me home. Because they would double up. They would put one salesperson and two laborers. And once they filled everybody up with all the vans, whoever was left went home. And I was always one of the ones that went home. The guy just didn't like me. I don't know what it was. So, um, but anyway, uh, then what happened was one time the boss took me with himself. Now, I didn't want to go anywhere with him, you know, because I told him, I'm like, you know, I'm making this trip from Queens. I really don't have the money to even make this trip. I'm borrowing money. I can't even pay them back because I don't have much money at the end of the week. It was really, really tough. So he he said, well, you come right with me. He was a real hood. That dude's name was Sal. All right, okay. So anyway, his name was Sal. But (laughs) Sal just don't like me. I don't know what it is. But anyway, (laughs) but he um, he took me in in his van. And it was so crazy because I did. I went in his van two days. The first day, he took me to his house and had me dig a ditch in his backyard because he had to lay some pipes in there. Yo, he killed me. I think they were paying us like $70 a day. Imagine that. Imagine that. And I was on his book. So it's like he got me to do the hardest job that you can do. I don't know if you guys ever dug up, physically dug up ground in New York, Long Island. It's difficult. And I think I had to do something like 25 feet and I think four feet deep. Yo, he killed me, man. He killed me. But I ended up doing it. I actually did it. I think it took me two days. And he did what he, I didn't have to fill it in. He just, he told me to leave it like that. Then on the third day, he took me out. And I was like, damn, man, we're going back to this how we're going to have me do now. It's just shine shoes. Like, so I knew he was playing me. I knew, but I, I needed the money. I already had my son. Adam was already born. I was like, you know, so um, I had an apartment that was, I'm having difficulty paying this rent, man. It was crazy. I think the rent was only like $600 a month, man. But I was struggling. I couldn't do it. So he takes me into... Now, I went on a few jobs, so I seen what the job consists of. So he takes me to a couple of the jobs, but he makes me stay and sit in the van. So while I'm sitting in the van, I'm like, damn, so I got to sit here. And what he's doing is he's going into the houses and he's following up after some of the guys that are doing the work. And he's just inspecting their work and maybe following up on the sale. So like, let's say... Somebody said, yeah, they want to do a liner. A liner is a stainless steel tube that goes down the chimney and it kind of keeps it from, you know, falling apart on the inside and causing fires. And then he would go and I guess pick up the check or whatever the case. I don't know why he went in there. Uh, most of the time I thought it was to inspect whatever job or to talk to the to the homeowner. But he would leave me in the van. And what happened was one day I was sitting in the van and he's there for a while. And I looked down on the floor there's a business card. So I bend down, I pick up the business card, and it says, Chim Cap. And I read it more, and it says, Chimney Caps and Stainless Steel stainless steel Liners and Other Chimney chimney Cleaning Accessories, something like that. So I see him come out, so I pop the card, I put it away. And then, go to another house. He does, he leaves me in there again, And I look on the floor. I mean, the floor was like garbage. It was like nothing. Like you walked into the van, you stood on paper. Like he was just ripping pages out of like invoices and throwing them on the floor. I picked up another one and I realized it was an invoice. And it was like a diagram of a chimney. And I saw how he used to kind of like, they used to write on it to show you where the damage was. So 
I took one of those, I folded, I put it in my pa my pocket. Then when I when I went home, I ordered, I ended up ordering, I called the Chim Cap Company, I think this was over the weekend, and they mailed me a catalog. Now I knew the resource, I knew where these guys were getting their 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 equipment. And let me tell you something, these chim caps were like $40 and they were selling them for like $2.95. The terracotta clay, those clay pipes that went inside, was you were buying for like five dollars, and they were selling them for like two hundred forty installed. Stainless steel liner was like I don't know, ten dollars a foot, and they were charging like three thousand to install it. I mean, it, yo, the money was bananas. So I said, mm. so I I'm the type of guy I geek out on. Everything. If I get into something, like right now, I told you guys I'm geeking out on uh, cryptocurrency. So within just a very, even though I've been studying for a while, I've been like kind of investing, kind of checking it out. But over this last last year, I kind of geeked out on it. So I kind of got a good, good feel of how the whole thing works on all, all the different coins and, you know, how, how the, um, you know, uh, the blockchains work and the whole works. And um, so I geek out on this stuff. So I started geeking out on this and I got the catalog and I started trying to, we, remember, we didn't have the internet. There was no internet yet. And then it was just, oh, and then this is what was happening. He finally sent me, now this was the deal, this was so crazy, is in the warehouse, right, they had this pile of broken gear. When I say a pile, it was almost like a dump truck dumped it in the middle of this warehouse. And it was just piled, like it looked like a mountain, like I would have to climb up there. So what I did is my job was to fill up the vans. The vans were pulling there. My job was to to fill up the vans with all like they have regular supplies in there. So they had their chimney poles, they had their vacuum cleaners, they had the cement, they had the 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 the, the chim caps, they had the flue pipe, everything was there. And they would tell me why I would have to order um fill up the van. And a lot of times they went in the front, the workers, I mean the 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 sales guys. They're going to and talk and drink coffee. So I'm in this warehouse all by myself loading up this truck. So I look into this pile of garbage and I start seeing things that look like I can use them. I start to see chimney poles that are bent and dirty. The ends are rusted. I see pieces of vacuum cleaners that look like that. I'm not a mechanical dude, but they look like they were just thrown out because they got a new one. I swear. So what I started doing for the next three or four days, and this was so, the timing was so crazy because they, I was living in Jackson Heights, Queens, and this is how, how messed up this, this dude was. I worked two and a half hours away from my house. The chimney company that I worked for were two and a half hours away from my house. This dude would have us doing chimneys in my neighborhood i'm talking about one block away because i lived in buildings but right up the block there were houses and those are what you did you did the chimneys for the houses so it was right up that right up the block i mean if i had to use the bathroom i could run to my apartment and come and go back that's how close i was do you know that this dude still made me go all the way back to the office to punch out how crazy is that now I had to go all the way back there, punch out, then take the train home. So this is the kind of person I was dealing with. So I had these big black garbage bags. So every day I would grab some of the gear that was broken, never stole. I never stole from anyone. Before prison, I stole. After prison, I didn't steal. <laughs> so. <laughs> I just didn't. That was, you know, that was my old life, and I had vowed I would never go that route again. Um, so I didn't steal. I found all this broken stuff, and I put it into black garbage bags, and I put them inside the van in the back. Now, a lot of times, the guys would go into the house, and they would leave me outside with the truck. While we were in Jackson Heights, I would, and I would have to unload the truck like while they were inside. So while I was unloading the truck, I would take these bags because they didn't know what was in there. They, they didn't care. And I would dump these bags in the bushes. Then when I would go all the way back to work and clock out and come all the way back home, I would go right to those bushes, grab my bags, 
and take them home and start building my gear. And I build myself something like 40 feet or 40 something feet worth of chimney poles. I had these big old rusted, rusted chimney brushes. I had all the pieces of vacuum cleaners that I actually built the vacuum cleaner um, and it got it working. Um, what else did I have? That was pretty much all I needed. All I needed for that job was um, was the poles and the vacuum cleaners. Everything else I can I can get from anywhere, so it wasn't a big deal. Once I did that, and it was just crazy that one day, this is like maybe a week later, I get to the office like I do every morning. I'm the first one there. I sit around. Next thing you know, another one comes. I think my nephew was still working there at that time. He came. And by this time, usually the boss is there and he opens up the door and lets us in. Now, we were still outside. And then the next one, and then the next one. And all of a sudden, like the whole crew is there. It's already getting daylight. And then finally, they start making phone calls. They start getting, uh, we didn't even have cell phones back then. I think they went and found a way. Of, they called like the main office and they, they sent somebody out. And when the guy went inside, apparently that boss cleaned out the place. So he like robbed the whole thing and disappeared and just like left us all. Nobody had ways of getting paid. We didn't get our money. Like a lot of stuff was off the books. It was, it was such a mess, but it was so crazy because at that time I had already all this gear. I already knew what I was going to do. I already planned on doing my own thing. So I went on, I, I forgot, I must have been, I went on in, in the newspaper and I, I, saw, I found someone, I think it was in Jamaica, Queens, that was selling a van, a cargo van, for $200, okay? And my mother lent me the money. And I went and I remember buying the van and it was just a cargo van. Like I had like, you know, 50,000 miles on it. I don't remember. I remember it was just like, it was borderline garbage, but it ran. I remember it didn't have a gas gauge because so many times, and at that time, I was so new to driving, I didn't realize that I can actually calculate the mileage, how many miles I was driving before I needed gas. So I never even thought about that. So many times I would get 30 feet from the pump and run out of gas. So many times I ran out of gas where I had to always travel with a gas can um, until one day it ran out of gas. I had totally got fed up and called my boy to come pick me up, took the plates off and left the damn thing on the side of the road. This was a little bit later on, uh, but I took that. I couldn't afford ladder racks, but I found a place where I could rent a ladder. So I would go and rent this ladder for like $30 for the day and I would tie it to the top. I would throw a blanket over the roof and I would put the ladder up there and I would tie it down, like going through the windows and up and, you know, through the doors. I forgot how I did it. And I would latch it down. I bought a dicky, a gray dicky suit, you know, the dicky uh, um, things. And I had my prison boots. Okay, I still have my prison boots because I was able to take all that stuff home. They were kind of dope. <laughs> Anybody who's been in prison knows what I'm talking about when you go upstate. But anyway, I had those prison boots and, um, so I used to knock on doors and I called my company Top to Bottom Chimney Services and I created this entire pitch where I would knock on the door and tell them, yeah, how you doing? My name is Latif Mercado and I'm with Top to Bottom Chimney Services and I'm in the area and we're giving uh, a, a special on chimney cleaning, just $30 and we clean your chimney from the top to the bottom. And they used to, they, a lot of times they didn't know what I meant because a lot of people who had homes never had their chimney cleaned. They didn't know. So they said, well, I don't have a chimney. I was like, no, everybody has a chimney. You can't see it because it's in the middle. So I learned the pitch, like, because I used to hear these guys talk all the time. Um, and by that time, I was also getting a lot of sales material from the company that used to supply me. It was called ChimCap. So they had brochures and they had like tapes. I used to buy tapes and I used to study this stuff. You know, I told you, I used to geek out on it. And um, um, so I used to knock on the door and then I had the diagram that looked like a chimney and that was actually an invoice. And I was able to draw like garbage in the chimney and I used to draw like the brushes. Like actually on my business card, I had a picture of a brush. So I say, see, this is the brush where it looks like and it goes down the chimney and we push it down. And then when the door, dirt hits the bottom, we make sure there's no blockage and then we clean it out. If you have gas and there's a blockage, that's how you get carbon monoxide buildup and it comes into the house and you can die. Or if you if you're... If you're burning oil, you could get what they call a, um, a blowback, I believe it's called. I don't know, it's been years. Um, and what happens, that soot goes everywhere. 
So I would sell this. I was good. I would sell a, a cleaning for just $35. But you see, the, the key was all I had to do was get on the roof. And once I got on the roof, I was able to take pictures with a Polaroid camera that I bought. Actually, my mother bought it for me. I remember she paid like $30 for it. Polaroid would have cameras phones. Remember at this time, we're talking about very early 90s, like 92 or something. And uh, maybe 91. And I remember going up there with the Polaroid, taking a picture of the chimney because every chimney had damage on top because it was so old and no one ever did anything. Then I would bring the picture downstairs, show it to them, and they would say, oh my God, and I would show them what is possibly happening, and boom, next thing you know, I made 500 bucks, and it took me like no time. I started hiring people who were coming out of prison, like a lot of my friends, they were coming out of prison and I was giving them jobs. The only problem is a lot of these dudes were scared to get on the roof, <laughs> so it was, it was a struggle. But, um, <clears throat> so I did that for quite a while and I made a ton of money. I mean, to a point where I actually ended up leasing a condo with the option to buy. However, and I started learning a lot about sales. I started learning a lot about, you know, just business. I was like, it wasn't really the chimney thing I, I cared about, but I love the business part. Just like with freestyle, it's a business part. It's just, that's the part that I was, I was really enjoying. Um, but I, I did really well. I even got to a point where my nephew, I hired him to come on and help me out. So now here's someone who taught me, who I didn't even know what chimney was, who I worked with, and he was actually a sales dude. And the tables kind of turned for a little while with that. He just came to roll with me. I was trying to make us both rich, you know? So, but he ended up, he's a plumber, so he wound up getting a real job. <laughs> and, um, but, uh, so, but anyway, so, you know, so that's pretty much, uh, that's, that's what happened with that. I'm trying to think if I was trying to get to a point, I probably was, and I started to babble. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I did, you know, I did the chimney service thing, uh, for quite some time and uh and, and then finally I got out of that you know it just it really wasn't for me I ended up getting back into the music um and uh doing my thing if I if I remember what the point was <laughs> that I was trying to get to I will put it into tomorrow's episode so but it was a cool story you gotta admit that um uh we never heard again from Sal Never heard from him again, and uh, I ended up, uh, I got a second van later on, um, so I had two vans at one point, but I pretty much uh, ended that pretty quick. Uh, I didn't want to do it anymore, it just wasn't really, but you know what's so crazy, I still have some of that gear. I think I have my, I still have the vacuum to my shed, and I have actually have the original poles that my mother helped us buy, helped me buy. They're up in my attic here, and I'll never give them away. Even the sales book that I created, I created this this really, really cool sales book where you flip through the screen. It actually has a picture of a raccoon coming out of a chimney out of the top. And that's what I used to sell them a chimney cap because the chimney cap not only kept water from falling into the chimney, but it also had a cage around it so animals couldn't get in. So it was cool and I used to tell people, <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> yeah, because sometimes animals used to get in there and then they used to die from the car, from the gases and stuff. And they used to drop to the bottom. If you have enough of that, uh, you could get a blockage and you could die. So it could be a bad scene. So anyway, just want to tell you guys that little story. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, like I said, if I figure out what my point was, because I'm sure there was a point. <laughs> we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. All right, guys. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget. Please. Um, I'm also on... Um, I don't know where you're listening to this, if you're listening it to to Anchor or some of the other um, uh, uh, platforms. Um, on YouTube, I'm also on YouTube. So if you go to Latif Mercado on YouTube, I have a playlist called Good Night Freestyle. It's actually all of these episodes. So you can share these. You can send these links to people so they can check them out or you could just, you know. But if you can, go on there and leave a comment. Let me know that you're listening to this. That will that would be really cool. If you have any questions, you can leave it there. Um, at the end of this month, when I hit episode number 30, I'm going to open up the Facebook page. 
so it's already I've been building it so it's a Facebook page for good night freestyle there we can start to maybe you know discuss hopefully you know discuss a little bit more maybe you guys have some questions and I can answer and and then I can also maybe post some pictures like let's say I have pictures of the, the chimney situation I could post them there so you kind of get a little bit more feels not just an audio thing you can kind of see what uh I can maybe give you little ideas of, of what's there so um so be on the lookout for that but don't forget also if you don't already you know follow me everywhere I'm on Instagram uh, I'm on Facebook um I'm even on uh, TikTok under my name so check those out I'm doing those with my granddaughter they're kind of fun just a little something to break away uh never thought I would do a, be doing something like t- like TikTok but I actually I kind of like it <laughs> I do I do them uh, they, they're kind of fun so but check it out let me know what you think um, if you're on TikTok make sure you follow me <laughs> follow me and all my little seven year old friends <laughs> anyway so uh, alright guys I'll see you I'll talk to you tomorrow okay alright peace and good night freestyle Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.